Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at CSS image replacement. Specifically, we're going to talk about creating a link for the home page of your website by placing your logo. So usually you place your logo, you want your logo to be linked to what? Your home page, of course. So when somebody clicks on your logo, boom, they go right to your home page. So we're going to talk about how to place this. You can see if I right click, I don't get any sort of, hey, save this image or copy this image or any of that kind of junk. Um, it's just saying like acting like it's a link because that's all it is. It's only a link and we're using CSS to get rid of the text and drop in the image. So we're going to talk about how we do this and it is so easy to do. So here, if I refresh this page, you can see, hey, nothing's there. Uh, so we're going to jump back into Dreamweaver and you can see, yes, in fact, nothing is there. Uh, we've got our big background image, but that's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over to code view and we're going to start by looking for where you want the logo to go. Now I want the logo to go up here into the header portion of my website. I'm working in an HTML5 document, so we're using the header tags. So here within the header tag, I'm going to create an opening and then a closed H1 tag. So the reason we're doing that is we want to place our link within this H1 tag. Now the H1 tag, a search engine is going to read this as being more important text. So whatever's inside of this, the search engine is going to say, all right, well, this is probably more pertinent to this website. This, this is important. It's a heading one tag. This is, uh, this is what this website's all about. Now, that's not to say you want to go around your website using H1s all over the place. That's not good to do either. Um, but H1s have their place, as do H2s and H3s and so on and so forth. Um, you might want to take some time and look into that if you're curious about it. But we're wrapping this in an H1 because up here, our title, this is super important, right? The title, it's what shows up up in this part. So the search engine's gonna use that, but the search engine's also gonna use these H1s to sort of say, you know, yeah, this is really important information on the, on the web page. So we're going to type in here, I'm actually probably just going to copy uh, the web page title and I'll paste it right there. And then what we would do is we would highlight that text and you can bring up your properties panel. Now, if you want to just hard code in by hand the anchor tag, that's fine. Um, and we're actually going to do a little hand coding within the anchor tag in a moment. But for now, for those of you that aren't comfortable with that, no big deal. We can just open up the properties panel and for link, you can place any link you like. Now, if you don't want to link to an actual website, you can just drop in the pound symbol. So that's shift and the number three. And there you go. We've created a, a link and it's just linking to nothing basically. Uh, so if I... I'm just going to knock down my, H, my closing H1 tag to the next line and indent my link. If I save this and I jump back out to here and refresh the page, you can see we've got this big uh, link up here. This is great. So we're describing the, in, the name of the Independent Film Festival. We're geotagging the fact that it's in Philadelphia. And then we've got three nice keywords in Independent Film Festival uh, that will all be great as far as search engines are concerned. So what we're going to now do is go ahead and attach a class to our link so we can target this anchor tag with CSS. So right here after the letter A, I'm going to go space and I'm going to type the word class and I'm going to say equals open and close quotes. Now those are double quotes by the way and I'm going to go inside of those double quotes and I'm going to say header hyphen logo. So I know that this is my logo that's within my header. So it's my primary logo is what's going on here. So I'm going to hide light this class name and command or control C to copy it because we're going to jump over to our CSS document and create this class so we actually start doing something with our link. So I'm going to save this then I'm going to jump over to my CSS document. So wherever you're writing your CSS you can go there and we're going to create this class. We're going to start by going period right that indicates that it's a class that we're working with command or control V to paste in our class name dot header logo open curly bracket, enter return twice, close curly bracket, and here just to give you guys something to look at, I'm going to say color, this is going to change the text color, and then we can just pick uh, something crazy, like let's go with green, uh, which it obviously is not now. I just command or control C to save the CSS document, jump back out here to our live version, you can see it's obviously just that sort of default blue for links, if I refresh, there you go, it converted to green. So we know that our class is, is targeting that bit of uh, type, all right, so uh, we're not, we don't want this to be green, however, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that and save my CSS document. I can jump back out, refresh, boom, we're back to blue, great. Um, now, real quick, before I go any further, one of the reasons that we like to do this, and there's some argument as, as to whether or not this is good or not, but pretty much everybody's doing it nowadays, so you might as well jump on board if for no, re if for no other reason than just because peer pressure, um, which isn't always a good thing, but in this case, hey, why not? Um, so what we're going to do, uh, or one of the reasons that this is good, excuse me, is you are adding sort of this extra line of type, so when it comes to accessibility and things like that, it's great now. 
your alt tag in, in, a, in just a normal placed image would theoretically do the same thing, but we've wrapped this in an H1 tag, so we're really kind of increasing the importance of this bit of type. Um, so just something to think about, um, but we're gonna go ahead and style this little class and start turning this into a logo. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our anchor, which is what's called an inline element, right? It's just highlightable text uh, to which you can't assign like a background image. You can't really constrain it to a certain size. There are just certain limitations. Now there are things you can do with it, but generally speaking. So the first thing we need to do is say, hey, display colon block. So we want this to display as a block level element. I'm gonna save this. I'm going to save my HTML document, and I'm going to jump back out here and refresh the page. You can see it looks like nothing's happened, right? We can still highlight the text. Everything is good. So we're going to jump back into Dreamweaver, and the next thing we're going to do is set a width and height for our block level element. Now, setting this width and height is sort of going to be creating this invisible box, so to speak, um, which is going to contain our text. Now. How do we determine the width and height we want? Well, if I jump over here to the bridge, I know I've got my logo file here, logo.png, and I can see that it's 506 pixels wide by 119 pixels tall. That's my width and height. So we're gonna jump back over to here and say width 509 pixels, colon, all right, 509px. Let me just double check that, uh, 506. Hey, I got it wrong, what do you know? 506, and then height, and I already forget the height, uh, 119, all right, so 119 pixels, and then a semicolon, all right, so let's save this and check to see what this does. Now, remember, this is obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but this is definitely more than 506 pixels wide because an inline element just goes all the way across the containing element, and right now, this sort of header tag is just stretching as wide as our wrapper. So if I reload this, you can see now that all of a sudden, we have this sort of invisible box, and if I bring up the web tools here in Chrome, right, I'm gonna use the little uh, uh, magda, magnifying glass, whatever you wanna call it, and I can see that this box that I have, which is just the blue area, the orange to the, uh, to the right is just sort of the open space over there, you can see that it's telling me the box is 506 pixels wide and 119 pixels tall, and you can see it's showing me the actual box, even though if I scroll away, look at that, the box just becomes completely hidden. So. That's what we're doing, we're creating that box. Now, into that box, we're going to go ahead and drop a background image. So here we go, we're gonna just say background, and you could say background image, I'm gonna say background, and then here in uh, Dreamweaver, it gives us the code hinting, so you can type out the rest, or just double click URL. And once this comes up, go ahead and hit site root to make sure you're in the correct site. Double click on your images folder and find your logo. So there's logo.png, great, I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm just gonna go space and say no hyphen repeat. So we don't want any repeating X, Y, or otherwise, nothing like that. So let's save this and jump back out to our browser and check to see what we've got. Refresh the page. Hey, look at that. We've got an image that shows up. And the image is completely clickable. That's great, no matter where you go on the image. Now, we all have the obvious problem, excuse me, of having the text that's still there. So we're going to go and get rid of that real quick. And there's a number of ways you can do this, um, but there are also some uh, interesting ways. I'm going to use a method developed by the fellow by the name of Scott Kellum, and you can check out his uh, website, scottkellum.com. I'll try to remember to throw a link in the description to this video, and there will be a link in the tutorial over on tutvid.com. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of set our text to be indented 100%. Now, the normal way to do this was text indented you know, negative 10,000 pixels basically. But that's sort of needlessly creating this massively wide box. So we're gonna say text hyphen indent colon 100% semicolon. Now right now that's not gonna do quite what we want. So we're gonna also say white space. So that's white hyphen space uh, colon, oops. No wrap, there's no wrap, great. And the last thing, overflow, and we're gonna just set this to hidden. So when that text gets shoved way off to the one side, hey, anything that overflows outside of our 506 pixel by 119 pixel box is going to be hidden. We don't want any of that stuff to show up. So go ahead and save that. Let's check to see what we've got now. We're gonna jump out to the browser, refresh, and hey, look at that, the text disappears. That's great. So we've gone ahead and pushed the text outside of this box, and it is in fact hidden. The last thing to do is to center this logo. Now, it actually doesn't look too bad off to the left. It probably wouldn't even look bad off to the right, but I kind of just want it centered because this website sort of has this whole, you know, one column central looking uh, theme. You can see even the phone number and everything down here at the end is centered, and even the little credits at the bottom. So, you know, if we're going to end it on a centered note, we should probably start it on a centered note as well. Um, 
Uh, so what we're going to do, this is pretty easy, because it's a block level element, we don't go text align center. No, instead, we just simply set a margin. So we're going to say margin, zero, so zero pixels top and bottom. And then left and right, we're going to set to auto, semicolon on the end of that, and go back to our browser, refresh, and there we have our logo centered up. You can see it's not an image. Well, it is an image, but it's an image being replaced, uh, or an image replacing text using CSS. So that is how you do a little CSS image replacement in photo, uh, excuse me, not Photoshop, in Dreamweaver. Um, and you can use this on much more, obviously, than just a logo. You can use this on all kinds of things where you might want to have more information for a search engine to read and then just, boom, replace it with some sort of an image. Um, and this is also, you know, rollovers and sprite images and things like that. It's all based on this general concept where you're taking the CSS, creating a box, and throwing a background image into there. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you picked up a thing or two. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around and watching it. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching, guys.